Here's how you can customize your cursors on Hyperline. Now, first of all, the cursor that I'm using right over here is a macOS cursor. So if I click on mouse cursor in NWG look, the cursor that I have over here is, ta-da, you guessed it, macOS. Now, this is what that cursor looks like. As you can see, it looks pretty macOS-like. So if I hover over this, you see the signature glove with the pointy thing, and then the rest of the icons as usual. So if I show you the resize, this is what resizing looks like resizing from any side for that matter this is what it looks like okay and then you have a couple of other options but that comes secondary what i actually want to show you is where you can find these cursors first so you go over to gnome-look.org which is everybody's favorite place to look for gtk themes and cursors and everything else it's uh, it's a really great place okay now here we are once it loads you want to click on cursors and then you will find no end to the amount of cursors that you can find over here. There is apparently, so if I just zoom in, there is 1062 cursors that you can get. So yeah, pretty fun, right? You can just look through these cursors, pick whichever one you want, and that's that. Now, I would end the video over here, but then that wouldn't be doing you a favor. So I'll show you some other ways in which you can pick cursors for your Hyperland setup. Main thing is you want to identify what kind of aesthetic you're going for. So I personally really enjoy Google's Material Aesthetic, Material 3 Expressive, Material U and whatnot. That's actually what's inspired this Waybar design along with this Overwatch panel, which is basically your control panel, along with this logout menu and this lock screen, right? Most, if not all of it, has been inspired by Google's Material U design philosophy. Oh, and by the way, if you want to know how to make something like this, this Waybar config, along with this control panel and the other op stuff that I showed you, like this logout menu and whatnot, just go ahead and click the first link in the description. I show you exactly how to make this from scratch without having to look at any different YouTube tutorial at all, right? Which means that not only do you not end up breaking anything, you end up wasting zero time at all. Because I personally have an incentive to make sure that you get the best and most quality information possible, you can bet that I put a lot of time into it. I put almost two months of nonstop work in order to make the program for you, so... You can bet at the program banks, right? So if you want to grab that, go ahead, click the first link in the description, and that's that. Anyway, back to aesthetics. So the aesthetic that I was going for over here was Material U. Now, whilst I like the Material U aesthetic for my waybar along with my control panel and then my logout menu and everything, I don't like it for my cursor. That's just my personal opinion. So I like Mac OS's cursor, which is why I've picked that. If you, however, wanted to get the complete material U aesthetic, you might also want to get the cursor. In which case, you look up material U cursor, okay, Linux. And then of course you find no end to the Linux cursor themes that you can find, which embody the material U design philosophy. So here, this one, Bibata cursor, if you, this is actually a well-known package in the arch user repository so if i just type in bibata cursor you have bibata modern and whatnot yep so you have bibata cursor theme and then you have all the other options right if you want to know what that looks like as an example i have bibata modern classic and this is what it looks like it looks pretty material you to me so you can pick this one or if you really like the material you aesthetic, but you wanted to take it just a tiny bit further, you could use this one. This one is called Google dot black. So Google dot black cursor Linux, just look that up. And then you see a GNOME look website. So you just click here. And then we find the website, the GitHub repo for it. So you can just click on this. Ta-da! So it's an open source cursor theme inspired by Google. Scroll down over here, and this is what it looks like. Now, because this actually looks like such a masterpiece, if only, you know, it, it had a tail like a normal cursor and everything. This, this actually looks really good, by the way. I have nothing against this cursor. If you want to, you can, of course, go ahead and use it, right? So let me just show you what this actually looks like and the process of installing a cursor. I showed you where to get it from. Now I'll show you how to install it. First of all, we check whether it's available in the AUR. Okay? Chances are, if you're watching this, channel you are most likely an arch linux user so you just look up google cursor okay it's not here so what we're going to do is improvise a little bit and then make sure that we can actually get this cursor so there's a release says section over here so you want to click on that you have v2 
And then we have a bunch of different cursor variants for Windows and Linux. So google.black is what we want to use. So we'll just click on this tar file, put it into downloads. And then once that downloads, what you want to do is CD into your downloads folder and then use tar-xzvf. Yeah, these are the flags that you want to use. If you want, you can actually check out what each of those flags is doing. If you type in tar-help, you'll see that there's a bunch of information. You can just look through all of this and then find whatever flags that you want. Yeah, basically, XZVF is going to deal with decompressing this archive for us. You don't have to com complicate yourself with anything else. Okay, so it's called Google, google.black. Okay, if we type ls, this is what we see, right? So we have google.black and then we have the tar zip. So if we just cd into that and check what we have going on, we have a cursor.theme, an index.theme, and the cursors, like, you know, PNGs themselves. If I type in tree cursors, it just shows that most of it is a symbolic link, but whatever is going on here is the actual cursor stuff itself. Now we have these dot theme files even in GTK folders as well, like in the folders of a GTK theme. So let me just explain to you what they actually do. Okay, so in cursor.theme, it is defining the name, which is google.black, and it inherits google.black. Main thing to focus on over here is going to be name itself, right? So if you wanted to change the actual name of this cursor, and you wanted to perhaps add a little bit of spacing, or you wanted to kebab case everything, you could do that, of course, you could change the name to be whatever you like. Not just that, but if we check index.theme, Again, same thing over here, inherits high color. So this is another icon pack, which means it's another cursor. Comment is it's a black cursor theme inspired by Google and then name, same thing, google.black. Now, what you want to do is move this folder into a dot icons directory. Now, usually most of your icon, if not all of your icon packs, in fact, would be put into user share icons. If I ls user share icons, this is what you see. So you have one UI, Mac OS. This is in fact where I've put my own cursors, but that might actually just be because I've installed them through the AUR. So if I just look for that, Mac OS cursor, is there anything? Okay, yep, this. Apple cursor, right? Open source Mac OS cursors. This package is actually what's installing these icons and putting them inside user share icons, not me manually. So unless you want this stuff to be overwritten or you don't want it to get damaged, you shouldn't put any icons in here, but then you should create a different folder, dot local share icons. You can put them in there or best way, even though it's a bit deprecated is to just create a home slash dot icons directory. I probably already have that if I'm not wrong. Yep. So this is where I store my simp, simple dark icons, simple dark cursor. So if you want to see what that looks like, pretty similar to Advaita, but then it doesn't, you know, it's a bit softer and then the tail is a bit more rounded. It's nitpicking, you could say that, but then it looks nicer, right? That's why I was using it initially, but now I use Mac OS cursors. Oh, and by the way, you can also get a white variant. That way it looks like this. It's not going to change the cursor because I use HyperCTL to apply the Mac OS cursor. But yeah, you have both variants. So you want to make a dot icons directory and you want to move google.black into home slash dot icons. Okay, now if you open NWG look, you should see google.black. Click on that and then you hit apply. It should apply it. Okay, but then if it doesn't apply, no need to worry. You can just use hyperctl to apply it. So you can use hyperctl set cursor. You want to copy the exact name over. So it's google.black and cursor size 24. Hit apply, and as you can see, the cursor automatically changes. This is what google.black looks like, and it actually looks like a really good cursor. It's sharp, everything works fantastically. The size changing works. It's a really good cursor, right? You can choose this one if you want to. Even clicking works really effectively. And that's that, right? Basically, that is how you install different cursors in Hyperlan. If, by the way, setting the icon, setting the cursor through NWG look doesn't actually work, so if you just hit apply over here and it doesn't work, what you should do is use HyperCTL in order to set the cursor. It doesn't have to be a hyper cursor that you're setting. All you have to do is just run this command and then it's going to set the cursor for you, as you just saw. If I show you 
config, hyper, modules, and here it's probably autostart.conf, right? We'll open this file. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what this modules folder is about, it's a section I cover it, you know, more in detail in a section called modularity in Hyper Accelerator, which is a program, which is the first link in the description. So you can just go ahead and check that out. Right? It's an idea called modularity. So you can just go and look that up. Okay. Now, once that's done, yep. Here in autostart.conf, under cursor, I have exec once hyperctl set cursor mac os 24. So every time I close Hyperland and then I log back in, this is going to set the cursor to macOS. So if you want your cursor setting to work, you're just going to have to set it to that. That's all. Okay, if you want to switch back, all you have to do is type the same command in and that's going to work. If you want to know how to make a blazing fast and beautiful setup like the one that you're seeing over here, including this wayward config, this Overwatch panel, this logout menu, and this lock screen, go ahead and click the first link in the description. As I already told you, I have a vested interest in making sure that you get the best results so you can rest assured that I've given everything I've had into this program. And not just that, but other people have been having enormous success with it too, as you can see from the testimonial that I have on the page. So you can just go ahead and check that out. I'm also updating the program every couple of days to make sure that you get the most up-to-date information because this is kind of like getting a book except it's not really just a book. It's a complete system in order to rise Hyperland to get it to look just the way that you want it, along with another myriad of benefits that I explain over there. So you can just go ahead, click the first link in the description and check it out. You have nothing to lose, so do go ahead, do it now. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Stay rising.